The Hindenburg's A-deck was the place where most everything happened. Eating, dining, sleeping, lounging, and sightseeing. As we walk up the stairs from the B-deck, we go towards the dining area. There were only a few tables in the dining area, and meals were served in shifts, much like on a train. But you'll notice the generous spacing between the tables, and that's something that there was a lot of on the Hindenburg lots of open space. On the other side of a low wall was the promenade for sitting or leaning against the wall to uh, watch the Atlantic Ocean pass far below. On the other side of the A deck, separated by passenger cabins, was a similar space but it had a different purpose. This was the lounge area with another large open space and aluminum chairs and tables. The piano was largely aluminum and pigskin and weighed about 400 pounds. For a little private time, there was a reading and writing room in back. Passengers could browse the small collection of books or write letters or postcards at the small writing desks. Finally, at night, there were 25 passenger cabins with bunks that could accommodate up to 50 people. Walls were thin. They were made of fabric and foam and had no windows. But they were just as good and maybe even better than railway sleepers. They had hot and cold water, a small fold-down writing desk, call buttons, and a closet.